Are you predicting a Standard & Poor's 500 bubble, like, a bit like the dot-coms of the 1990s? Well, I've been talking about this for a long time, and I think last week what we learned is you can't T-bill and chill anymore. I mean, you can't park your money into a T-bill. Uh, you're not getting that 5% anymore. And I've been saying that every week, that 5% is going away. Do something with your money, because we still have the tune of $6 trillion sitting in cash. And I'm seeing this now, sitting in money market funds. And last week, there's no coincidence, we saw about $20 billion come out of money market funds as the rates got cut by the Fed. And a lot of that money is getting driven where? Into the stock market, right? right? We had a huge melt up on Thursday, but we still have so much money sitting in cash. And if the Fed's going to be more aggressive with their monetary policy, and it looks like they are, I'm actually a little surprised they cut as much as they did. Well, that means those rates are going to drop quicker, which means money has to go somewhere quicker. And my guess is a lot is going to end up back in the stock market. So that would create a bubble, then? It's not a bubble yet, but it's kind of a bubble. It's going to be a bubble. I think we're in some parts of the market, like technology, AI specifically. You're already in that bubble formation stage. Now, like I always say, I don't have a crystal ball. I wish I did. I'd be on my yacht. Um, but I would say that those areas of the market are probably a little more overvalued and at some point here. You know, if anything's going to pop, it's going to be those areas. Meanwhile, but if you look at, like, the other 493 stocks in the S&P 500, that aren't the Magnificent Seven, you look at other industries, all trading at relatively low valuations uh, with way more upside because you're going to see a reacceleration of earnings. Profits are actually going to start going up this year next year for every stock that's not artificial intelligence and technology. That's a really good thing, good reason to broaden out your exposure. Here's something that worries a lot of stock market investors, the yield on the 10-year Treasury. It's been going up. And look at it now. You're getting real close to being back to 380. It had been below 370, which was a positive. Now at 380, it's not a positive, is it? Well, yes and no. That was very astute <laughs> to actually pick that up. Uh, because short-term rates are coming down. Longer-term rates are starting to go up. What I think that indicates is, A, there's probably more inflation out there than we initially thought, right? We, we see it moderating in the short term. But coming into next year, my guess is, Economic growth is already picking up. Now you're adding fuel to the fire. I mean, the Fed's basically adding gasoline to this fire by cutting rates as much as they are. So I think economic growth is actually be a lot better next year than is anticipated, which means you'll probably have more inflation, which isn't necessarily negative, but you know, that comes with higher interest rates on the longer end of the curve. And that's exactly what you're seeing. I think the longer end of the curve is telling you that I don't think the inflation battle's over here. The Fed might be may be cutting a little too quickly. Mortgage rates are not going to come down much, are they? They're going to come down probably incrementally, because even the spread between the 10-year and mortgage rates is still relatively high. So I think they will. And they already have come down. Right? They went from 7 to 6%, so a lot of that's priced in. But think about the consumer. Now they're able to refinance that debt. And what are they going to do with that extra money? They're going to spend it. And on top of that, you have oil prices down to $70 a barrel. Um, that's a huge stimulus to the American consumer. So you've got all these catalysts right now that say, more economic growth, consumers trying to spend more money, probably higher interest rates on the longer end of the curve going into next year. Buy an index that leaves out the big, big tech. I would say, yeah, diversify the daylights out of your money. Have some exposure there. I've been preaching this for a long time, but what I see with most investors right now, they're all following the hot spots, and that's, you know, mega cap tech, AI for the last year, two years. It's like spread out your money. You're going to thank me later. Okay, that's a warning from Ryan Payne. All right, and we'll take it. We'll take it. Hey. Thanks, Ryan. You're all right. Thanks, Stuart.